So let's go ahead and start. <coughs> Bismillah walhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'ana bima alamtana. Inna ka sami'un mujibu dua. Wa man ya'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa qalbin la yakhsha. Wa nafsin la tashba' wa dua'in la yusma'. ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي before we start I'm sure everybody is aware of what is happening in the world and um, it's the word disaster is not even uh, uh, befit uh, I don't know how many of the videos you have been seeing and it's devastating least to say I, I سبحان الله I saw this morning I just couldn't share it with anyone. This is a young woman, and I couldn't remember if it was in Turkey or in Syria, but this is a young woman, at least 30, wear hijab, full Muslim. She is out, but the children is under the rubble. So you can imagine what she was saying and doing, looking at the rubbles, and the children is under. It's beyond, I mean, beyond human beings. So the reason I'm saying this is because we really need two things. The first question you all have to ask yourself, what can we do for them? Life cannot continue the same because this is a major, not only a major earthquake, it's a major sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He allowed it. I kept saying to myself, he allowed it. It's his earth, right? If he wanted to know earthquake, he would have told the earth, stay where you are, right? And why it's in the Muslim country? All these questions, don't, don't question Allah's wisdom. But what are you telling me? What are you telling me? There's a hadith, I shared it with you. About a month ago, and we talked about sins, if you remember. What happens in the world and then start seeing more earthquakes? Do you remember? You all remember what it is? It's a lot. When singing becomes norm, when alcohol becomes norm, and when relationships outside marriage becomes norm, one of the first things that's going to come out is earthquakes. So it is a reminder to us to do two things. This is where we are real Muslims, and we really care about each other. How many of you put them in your dua since morning? Literally. Can you think of it? May Allah protect us all. I was I kept saying, I was like, Ya Rabbi, that's not because I am special. Just your hikmah, your wisdom, your rahmah. If this is me, what I want from you, make a dua. Ya Allah, make it easy. Ya Allah, rahmatak. Ya Allah, dafihum. Ya Allah, make them feel warmer. Ya Allah, those who, who are lost, give them jannah for those, those, those who lost people. You know, like this mother, I still her images in my mind and my brain, my body actually. And every minute I was like, Ya Allah, irbat ala qalbaha. Ya Allah, keep her heart tight, close, strong. This is huge. I mean, the, the more, the more. Images are coming the more, and the weather is the other option, the other problem. It's very cold and snowy and it's icy, so even the relief is becoming very difficult. And it's these are matter of days. I mean, within three days, it moves from rescue to basically just get out the bodies. So number one is dua and sincere dua. Number two, absolutely start donating. I had a friend of mine who says, I barely can do, uh, I put food on the table. I said, can't you do $5? Stop drinking this coffee every day for $5. And then give it, give it. That's two. And number three, donate absolutely anything. I mean, there is a lot. Even I just got a message that even Amazon, actually. Now there is a, in Amazon, you go, and then it goes directly to the um, Turkish consulate in Chicago. And they will take it directly. They need everything. You know how you think of it? You went to bed and you had all the plans of the day and all the plans of the year and all the plans of the week. And 417, you're dead. Or 417, you left in your pajama, as this is also one of the images we saw, the family, and you have nothing. SubhanAllah, this was a physician and his family in the pajama outside because it is nafsi nafsi so when you see this image remember things can change in a minute and it is time to go back to allah this is what i keep saying to myself before anyone what else allah will show me to remind me that this is temporary this can change in a minute this could be easily me what else he will do 
So don't take it lightly. Don't one day, you know, you watch TV and the next day back to, no. This is going to take a while. It's one of the worst in more than 100 years in that area. And it is populated. You probably, all of you have visited Turkey and you see how it is. And I'm sure uh, northern Syria is the same. It's, these are populated. It's all buildings where families live together. So dua, a lot of charity. And the most important one is each one of us has to do a lot of istighfar. It could be me. It could be my sin, because it's one of the results of sinning is earthquakes come out. Allah said this in Surah Al-Anfal. Beware of a test that is not going to affect only the wrongdoers. These people are probably much better than me. I'm sure they are. And this is what Allah says. Beware of a test that is not going to be affecting only the wrongdoer. It's going to be affecting everybody. And know Allah has severe punishment. And this is in front of us. 5,000 this morning. I'm sure now if you check, it's, it's, they, are, they are expecting it's going to be in the, in the thousands. And remember, North Syria, we don't have a lot of information coming. So we really don't know what is happening. What we are seeing mostly is we are seeing from Turkey because of the easier communication. So don't take it lightly. This is not like any other day. Remember, I'm sure many of these people had plans for Ramadan. SubhanAllah, they may even have invited people to their home. There's no home anymore. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make every sign that comes to us is a way of us to remember and to change. Can't keep doing the same thing. And Allah keeps sending this. We live in a state which is on the line of earthquakes also. It's one of the ones. So alhamdulillah, Allah saved us. And keep reminding yourself, and this is a good time also to learn special ad'iyah, as special supplications when we go through difficult times. Dua al-karb, dua al-sayyid al-istighfar, la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al Keep saying it. Inna kunna min al All of us. People are different, but all of us have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them, Ya Rabbi Ameen. So subhanAllah, again, and I love this when Allah plans things and I didn't plan it. I didn't know there were going to be an earthquake the week of I'm going to be talking about Tawbah. Turn back to Allah. To reconnect, remember what we are talking about. We have seven weeks to Ramadan. Our goal is to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before Ramadan comes in. And we said the first thing about reconnecting to Allah is what? Is knowledge is know, know who you are, know who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know why you are here. We are, and again, I'll remind everyone, we are not here to have fun only. We are not here to enjoy our life only. And I'm not saying don't enjoy your life, but that's not the only reason I am here. Can't focus 80 and 90% of the time on having fun, we drink, we eat, where I'm going to go for vacation, what I'm going to go next. That's not what Allah put me here for. I'm a Muslim. I'm here a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I need to learn. Learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn about yourself. Learn why you are here. Learn what is Allah wanting from me and what is he expecting from me. That's number one. Last week we talked about love. And I hope all of you went home and start examining yourself. Do you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what does love mean? If I can ask, because people are coming, anybody who's young to be on, especially children less than 12, they need to be upstairs. Please, jazakumullah khair. We have said this many times. May Allah reward you. So number two is the love of Allah. I hope now when you say, someone asks you, do you love Allah? You will think it's a zillion times before you raise your hand. Because every claim we do, we need a proof. Do I really love Allah? Is Allah really number one in my life? Is every decision I make based upon his pleasure or based upon me and what people want from me and what I like? Now, once you start loving someone, the relationship with Allah, it's going to be much easier. If you think of it, Allah is exalted. But think of it as you have a relationship with someone. Who do you want to connect with? Usually, people you know, but that's not enough. Because not everybody you know, you want to be connected. Sometimes you think, I wish I don't know them. Usually, people you love. 
right? And how do you love someone? You know them. They do things for you. They don't disappoint you. They are there for you. When you ask them, they do it. Then once you do that, you start looking at yourself. And you say, did I hurt them? What is my relationship with them? Is it one way? When I meet them, I call them? Or it should change? It should be both ways. I love you, you love me. I ask you, I give you, right? This is what's tawbah. This is when you return back to Allah. And the first step in returning back to Allah, you, you and I and all of us acknowledge what? Acknowledge what? I want to hear it. We are? Yes. I acknowledge I am a sinner. It doesn't mean 24-7, but I have definitely disobeyed Allah. Could be one time in my life, which I doubt it. Could be one time in the week, and I also doubt it. Probably today, I'm sure. And I'm not talking major or minor. I'm just talking in general. Now, you love someone, and you find out that the text you send was not the best words. What do you feel? Ouch. Ah, how am I going to correct this? Would they understand I did it by mistake? That's tawbah. That's when you start returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, you need to analyze the relationship. We agreed we have it. Last week we agreed we, we love him. Alhamdulillah. Now, who is the wrongdoer? Subhana exalted. What did I do? What did I do? Or I will add, what did I not do? If we look at, and we're going to be very honest with ourselves, this is the most important thing. Sister, there is some chairs here in the front. You can come from the side or from here, whatever you like. To honestly, to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be so honest with yourself. Don't worry about people. Honestly, I care less. Because it's not about me and people. It's about me and him. You need to sit down and ask yourself this question, each one of you, from this morning till today, till now. How many times we have disobeyed Allah? And I said we. How many times? Everybody is different. And you need to write it down. Once you identify it, you are in the light. Now the next step, what should I do? Because our main problem is, young and old, is we are defensive. You know what's defensive mean? Who can tell me? The youth. What's defensive? Someone tells you, you hurt me. You said, I didn't mean it. I didn't do anything. Why are you making it too, too big deal? You're too emotional. You know all these words we say? That's defensive. Versus the same thing, and you say, really? What did I do? Tell me. I'm okay. I'll take it. Just tell me. I didn't pay attention. A huge difference. When I am not defensive, I'll change. When you are defensive or I am defensive, we will not change. My always yani, um, way when I talk to people, and if I start seeing them defensive, I explain one. Once, and if they start being defensive, I said, that's it. I didn't, I think, let's, let's use the time in a better way. And that's to the adult before the youth. Don't defend your sins. That doesn't mean despair. You need all to learn this. Because never despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acknowledging is something, defensing is something else. Defending, I'm not going to change. If someone looks at you and says, you know what? When you come to the masjid, you need to dress a little bit better. Don't say what's wrong with me. Don't tell me it's my choice. Absolutely, it's your choice. But outside the masjid. This is his house. He has rules, not mine. If you don't want to follow the rules, if somebody comes to your house, and your rule, you put a sign on the door, and I've seen it in many homes I attended, 
and they say, please take off your shoes. You have seen it? I've seen it in many places. And they put actually for you a shoe rack, and they sometimes, or they put you a shoe cover. And sometimes people, very generous, they even put you slippers. They come in with their shoes. What do you do? You're going to remind her, right? She didn't do it. What are you going to do next time? I want to hear it. Next time, not this time. She's in your home. She's your guest now. What are you going to do? You will not invite her. Period. And if you say this to anybody, you say, you know what? It's your right. It's your home. So here I am. When I start acknowledging that I am doing a mistake, that's the first step of turning back to Allah. And by the way, he doesn't need my tawbah. Honestly, Allah doesn't need me. And he doesn't need you. None of us. There is billions of people out there. What's so special about you? If I prayed or I didn't pray, who cares? If I said alhamdulillah or I didn't, who cares? Right? And this is the, the, the hadith, which is a Qudsi hadith, the meaning of لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب ما زاد ذلك في ملك الله If everyone, this is hadith, saying of Rasulullah If everyone, إنسكم وجنكم, all the humans and all the jinns were as if one person and that person is the highest level of taqwa, of Allah's conscious. Everybody, nothing in the domain of Allah would be higher. More. And the opposite is also true. In the hadith, he says, again, insakum wa jinnakum, awalakum wa akhirakum, first and last, and the humans and the jinns, if they were all fasiq, they disobey Allah publicly, nothing will be less in the domain of Allah. It is for me. And this is one of the beauty of this deen. Because when I obey Allah, I'm doing it for myself. And when I disobey Allah, it's I am doing injustice to myself. So the first step, after you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you learn, and then you start loving him or resuscitate the love, because we all love him. But the love is sometimes take vacation. Let's resuscitate the love. The next step, natural comes in, you're going to say, what did I do? Like you love somebody and says, I hurt her or I hurt her. I know that. And I don't know how to make it up for her. And you start talking with your friends, and people say, you know, text her, cook for her, send her flowers, whatever you do, and it works. What is the flowers I sent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there flowers? Yes, but not flowers. You turn to him. You turn to him with this heart and with these eyes that's shedding tears. And he says, Ya Allah, forgive me. Period. Doesn't need much. And you know what he will be? You know the hadith? لَاللَّهُ أَشَدُّ فَرَحًا بِتَوْبَةِ أَحَدِكُمْ بِتَوْبَةِ عَبْدِهِ مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ Allah is way more happy. And he, Rasulullah is giving a parable now. Allah is way more happy by the fact that the servant, you and me, the sinners, that we disobey him morning and evening. And I decided... I saw the video of the earthquake. I heard the lecture. Something happened in me. And I said, you know what? Enough is enough. I need to go back to you, Ya Rabbi. That hal, that state in me, Allah will be so happy with you and me, way more. And that's the parable he said in the hadith, that someone of, one of you in the desert, alone, with the camel and all what he needs, and he loses them completely. And he stays alone in the desert. And he said, I am going to sleep till I die. This is the hadith. I'm just translating it. And then he sleeps. And then he wakes up and he finds it. He finds in front of him the camel with everything in it. Out of his joy. And he says to Allah, Anta abdi wa ana rabbuk. Out of the happiness, he says, Ya Allah, thank you. You are my servant. I am your Lord. And the Rasul والسلام, says, الفرح. He is, he made a huge mistake out of happiness. Imagine you and me turn to Allah in your next salah here in Aisha, in your sujood, and you say, Ya Allah, please forgive me. 
Allah way happier than this man who found the camel. What a generous Allah we have and how miser we are. We're so miser with ourselves. We don't even have time to say Astaghfirullah. But I have time for everything else. A tawbah turning back to Allah is not a choice. It's an order. Do you know that? It's an obligation. It's like you do salah, like you do hijab, like you fast Ramadan coming. It's an obligation. And it's not my word. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Ya ayuha ladina amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O you who believe, you and me, all of us, young and old, tubu, repent. To whom? Tubu ila Allah. And what kind of tawbah? Just like that. Tawbat al nasuha, sincere one, and nasuh in Arabic, the one that removes everything. True repentance, meaning if I am sincere, nothing stays in my book. If I am sincere, and I'll give you the signs of sincere tawbah, when I go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my book in front of him, those people who died in the earthquake, done, the book is closed now. So imagine I am going to go to Allah and I just said, Astaghfirullah before I went to bed. And it's actually one of the sunan is before you go to bed is you ask Allah for tawbah. Before you go to bed, do this. This is one of the lessons we need to learn is don't you go to bed with the disobedience of Allah. Go to bed and sleep with wudu. Asking Allah, do whatever you can read. The Mu'awwidha, the three quls, Ayatul Kursi, the last part of Surah Al-Baqarah. And the last thing you say is, Ya Allah, please forgive me. And imagine I die. That's it. I have it in my book. Sincere, I mean it. Ya Allah, I did so much today. But please tomorrow. Wallahi, I feel so bad. And tomorrow I want to be the best. And you die. He knows you are sincere. He knows you are truthful. That's it. You go clean. Beautiful. You'll be so happy. What does he say? The person who Allah will give him or her the book in her right hand. What do they say? You all know it. What do they say? You're going to say, yeah, come and read my book. You know when you, when you have a test and then they give you the result and you scored amazing? What are you going to do? Gonna walk with everybody and show them. Right? Text everyone, copy of it, because you're so happy. And that's what he said. He says, Come on, come on, come and read. I was ready. I prepared. The one who, may Allah protect us all. They will give in their book. They will be given their book in the left hand. What is he going to say? Ya laytani lam umta kitabiya walam adri ma hisabiya Ya laytaha kanat al-qadiya ma aghna anni maliya halaka anni sultaniya The person who is going to be given the left hand. What is the left hand? The book is heavier. The sins are more. That's the left hand. Heavier, more sins. And how can we have more sins and every good deed times 10? Every good deed times 10. You spend one hour in the masjid today, today that's equal 10 hours. How can I have a left? My book is in my left hand, meaning for every good deed I did, I did 10 bad deeds. So if that's the case, then my left side will be heavier. This is the, yani it's, a, it's a parable that, that it's the left or the hand. It's not really left and hand. But the left is usually the negative. And when I or you, may Allah protect us, not us, will be given the book by the left side, what are we going to say? Woe on me. I wish they didn't give me my book. I wish I was dead. I wish when I was resurrected, I'm dead. Because now, and by the way, when we are in front of Allah and he is asking us, this is the biggest punishment. And that's what Sayyidah Aisha said, asked the Rasul 
قال من نوقش الحساب when Allah look at you and says why on Tuesday at 6.30 you were this why on Monday this you were this Allah knows and he knows why I did and I did not that question is a punishment by itself because who is asking who is asking you need to think of this the creator the one who has all the power the one who feed you and me and the one who allowed the earthquake to happen and the one who allowed one building to go and the next one stood up did you see all this have you have you have you asked yourself why these people are walking in the street and the others died in the building that's his qadr he gave those walking in the streets another chance you and me and those in the building no more chance tubu ila allah tawbatan nasuha turn back to allah a true one not a fake one you know what's the fake one wallahi and we say it that's it I'm not going to do this anymore. And within an hour, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but you were not sincere. You didn't put the effort. And Rasul said the following, Ya Yuhannas, that's the order. Tubu ila rabbikum. People, all of us, return back to your Lord. Ask for forgiveness. And he says about himself, فَإِنِّي أَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الْيَوْمِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةً I want you, literally, if you go today and you only learn this hadith, this will change you. Go back, and he says, Ya Yuhannas, people, Ya people, Tubu ilallah, turn to Allah. I turn, he, not me. I, fa'inni atubu ilallah, I turn back to Allah hundred times in the day. Billah alaykum by Allah, and I want you to think with me, give me your hearts. What did the Rasul talked talk about? In all his day, what did he talk about? Qala Allah, qala Rasul, right? Everything we learn, it's from him. All the Quran we learn, it was given to him. What did he do? What did he do? He mocked people, hasha. He backbited people, hasha. He looked down at people. He didn't help, he didn't forgive, he didn't pardon, and he does 100 times a day. In another, another narration, they said, we counted, we sat with him, and we counted 100 times. The Sahaba counted. You know, they used to watch him and learn from him. What about you and me? When was the last time you said, Astaghfirullah, other than when you were upset? It's so sad. Turn back to Allah. Tubu ila Allahi. Tawbatan nasuha. To go back to Allah. A true one. Another hadith he said, alayhi salatu wa salam. Innahu la yaghanu ala qalbi. I sometimes, he's saying about himself. Sometimes I feel my heart is covered. It's not seeing clearly. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's wrong. I don't know if I should do that. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Yaghanu ala qalbi. I feel it. And what does he do? Immediately he said, فَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي الْيَوْمِ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً That's the other number. I seek refuge in Allah 70 times. 70 times. We really need today focus. And I'm not going to give you numbers. Just keep asking Allah for forgiveness. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ Again, for those of you who came, who, جزاكم الله خير, who showed up a little bit late, be careful. What happened in Turkey could be my sin. Could be my sin. وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً Beware of a test. That is not going to be affecting only the wrongdoer. It affects everybody. So start your journey of forgive, asking Allah for forgiveness. There's a verse in the Quran. Every time I read it, I was like, what? What, Ya Rabbi, what is that? What Allah said to Rasul to him. The last verse in Surah Muhammad. You know what he said? Fa'lam. No. Allah ilaha illallah. No, that there is no God but Allah. Ya Allah, Yani Rasul doesn't know. Who taught us? That's not it. That's not the one that makes me, I was like, Fa'lam? 
If he doesn't know, who knows? And then, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ And ask forgiveness for your sin to Rasulullah So it's time for all of us. If you're really sincere, which I think you are, there is no reason not to think the other way. Even if you think you are not, no, give yourself benefit of doubt. And say, you know what? I really want that. Maybe I'm weak. Maybe I am not consistent, but I want that. And I'm sure you are. Otherwise, you will not be here because you know the subject. It was on the flyer. So you know what we're going to be talking about. But start from today. Don't wait till Ramadan. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. 417 is when the earthquake hit. Most people were in their bed. And I was wondering who was up praying Qiyam. And it hit at that moment. Allah, what a lucky people they were. That they were with talking with Allah and Allah decided to take them back to him. Versus, may Allah forgive us whatever we do in the night. So, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. There is never too late. And that's what Rasulullah said. Inna Allah la yaqbalu tawbat al abd ma lam yugharghir. He said, Allah will accept your repentance as long as. And he used the word yugharghir. How many of you have seen someone dying that the last breath? Anybody have seen this? Definitely, I have seen it. What do you see in their mouth? What do you see in their mouth? It's usually froth. That's al gharghara They usually start taking the last breath. You say they are taking the last breath, which basically means the soul is out, is here. Then you see them t- gasping, we call it. If that person at that stage, there's no more tawbah. That's it. So alhamdulillah, I'm walking, I'm talking, I'm seeing you, you're listening to me, we're alive. Rabbi lak alhamd, I have the, t- the chance. As long as I am alive, there is never too late. The only time too late if it gets here. Hatta idha balagat al As Allah said it in Surah Qaf, when the soul comes to here. So tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. That's number one. What are the, this is very nice book. Again, I'm going to say it again. As, it's the same book. We talked about it last, last week. And here there's about 100 pages about Tawbah. More than 100 pages about Tawbah. We taught it last year in the year of knowledge over one year. Because it is so detailed, subhanAllah. First thing he says, how about I don't want to do Tawbah? Or I think I'm doing it. I'm fine. Why you're giving me this? I'm absolutely convinced I'm okay. What did Allah says? وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ You don't want to do it? I'm fine. I don't need it. I'm okay. Okay. And Allah didn't say anything. This is the beauty of the words of Allah. He always leave it to you to decide. I love this. If you, if you look at the Qur'an in this way, you will see it. He never, very few times, when, especially if he talks about kufr, he will say jahannam. But most of the time, he will leave you to a description. And he says, you don't want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's okay. You're the wrongdoer. Okay. You know when you sometimes you say to people, your friends, you say, we're going out. Do you want to come with us? They said, no, I'm tired. Okay. You're the loser. Don't we say that to everybody? And then you come back and says, you don't know what you missed. That's what Allah is saying. You don't want to repent? You don't want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are the um, wrongdoer. This is a very powerful and it's a little bit painful, but it's okay. Today is, is subhanAllah. And he's saying here, do you know why we sin? It's something related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you sin? Why do I say something I shouldn't say it? Why do I look at something haram? Why do I do whatever that's not pleasing to Allah? You know what they say? At that moment, Allah pulled his protection from you and he left you to do it. SubhanAllah. He says, Allah is always, Subhana, always trying to protect us. Again, this is beyond you and me. 
You know, when you have your child, always think this way and you will understand. You have a two-year-old baby and he or she is starting to walk. What do you normally do? You're behind them. You're letting them walk, but you're behind them. And then it's like, oh, you jump because they're going to fall. Or they're going to the, let's say, to the electric outlet and you say, no, no, no. Oh. That's Allah with you and me. He doesn't want you and me to fall or to disobey. So he keeps sending you and me things to protect me. Reminder, someone say a word, something happened, an incident. You wanted to disobey Allah and the internet uh, went off, something. That's his protection. But when he let me disobey, he leaves me. They say, at this moment, he left you. Imagine if you love someone and that person leaves you. How you feel? He left me. This is why I always say, what did I do that you gave hope on me in that moment? Not all the time, walillah alhamd, but that moment. I didn't word something in his eyes, and he let me. And that's what he was saying, because he said, if you are always connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you truly love him, and you truly know him, he's going to protect you. وَاَتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ That's what he said. He says, hold on. This is in Surah Al-Hajj. Hold on to Allah. Hold on to Allah. You know how do you hold on to Allah? It doesn't mean you're going to stand up five hours in the night praying. That's beautiful. But that's not only. You're coming to the masjid. And as you entered, you said to yourself, Ya Allah, Please, let me act inside the masjid the way that pleases you. اعتصمتي بالله you, you asked for him, and he is going to protect you. Verses you don't remember. You just go in and you're looking at your phone as we all do, or talking on the phone. You left him, and you left him temporarily. And he said, okay, stay with your phone and see what will happen. هذا الاعتصام بالله that's why always make dua for yourself. Always, don't be miser. Make dua for yourself. Because we are all weak. If Allah is not going to protect me, nobody will stay on the straight path. Human beings were created weak. So remember this, to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Less dhunub, less sins, I am better. And then what I need from Allah is to protect me. And one of the du'as I always do, every time I come to speak, wherever I am speaking, you know what I make du'a to myself? Make me speak what pleases you. Not what pleases people. Because I could speak to please people and not pleasing him. Atasamti billah. You asked for his protection. And who's better protector than Allah? al Hafiz. Is there another one, al Hafiz that you know? Is there another one who can protect you? Do you know? There isn't. Subhanallah. Look at this one. How many of us, don't show me hands because that's a tough question, but I want you to think of it. How many of us disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are happy? Not happy we disobeyed Allah. We are happy in what we are doing. I like it. I'm watching this movie and this movie is full of disobedience of Allah and you are enjoying it. You're saying things because you're upset with this person, she or he, and I'm just venting as the word we use. Then you're happy. It says, ah, oh, it's out of my chest. The sign that Tawbah is far is when I enjoy the sin. So sinning itself is we all. And this is the landmark. If I enjoy it, the problem is huge. It's huge. That's what the scholars tell you. If I do it, but I feel bad during or after, why did I do that? Why did I say this? Why did I keep watching? You have a heart that is alive. That's what the scholar says. If you enjoy, subhanAllah, he put a beautiful statement here. And he said, if you are enjoying your sins, go and find a new heart. Your heart is dead. And he's talking about spiritual one. This is how you know I am okay. Meaning, I am not perfect. Nobody is perfect. But I am struggling. 
Because I was like, why did I do it? Why did I say it? Versus, ah, and worse if you come in the morning and talk about it. And tell people or share it or text people. Did you see this movie? Make sure you go and see it. And the movie is full of disobedience of Allah. And you not only enjoyed it, and you're not only not regretting it, but you are making other people, because we are vulnerable. We're very easy to move this direction or that direction. Three signs that your toba is pure, is, is good, is excellent, is going to cleanse you. Look at toba as you have a dirty dish. That's our daily life. And you're going to come and wash, right? What do I need to clean that plate? Normally, what do we need? Three things we need, right? We need water, we need a sponge, and we need a detergent. Khalasna, done. What about tawbah? What do I need? So the plate will come back as clean. I need three things. Number one is they call it regret. Nadamun mu'lim, they call it. It's a pain in me. You know, how many of you have been to Mecca? Alhamdulillah. What happened if you missed the jama'ah in the haram in Mecca? What was going to happen? Why didn't you wake me up? Yani, I'm coming to Mecca. I paid all this money and I didn't go to the haram for one salah. That's nadam. And you feel it and you're so sad and you get upset and you tell your roommate, make sure you go, you, t- you wake me up. Am I right? That's a nadam. You regret Regret does not live together with justification. The moment you tell me, but I stop listening, you're justifying it. The moment you say, I didn't mean it, you're justifying it. Say, I know it was wrong. But I was so weak. I don't know why I was weak, but I was weak. And he's going to help me. That's what you need. Nadam, number one. Number two, which is extremely important, this is practical. You need to remove, they call it al-iqla'u an al-dam. You need to stop doing it. Now, easy said, how easy it is to be done. What do you have to do? Let's, Let's talk about a sin that we all do. May Allah forgive us all. What is the commonest sin we all do? And don't be angels in this room. Backbiting. Whether backbiting texting, whether backbiting posting, whether backbiting calling, whether backbiting leaving a voice note. These are the way of communication. Or backbiting talking. Right? What should I do? I'm not going to do it next time. It's not going to work. Because you will do it. You need to take steps. Al-Iqla, they call it. You know when the plane take off? What is the plane doing? It's actually leaving all the earth behind it. They call it iqla. In the Arabic, is the, the same word. It's take off. So let's you and me take off from a sin. And we, we said uh, backbiting. What do you have to do? Number one, what made you backbite? Who? Ha- I'm sorry? Anger. anger, usually. It's number one is anger, which under the anger is kibber is arrogance. She thinks she's better than me? No, I am better. And you start texting and says, oh, you don't know what she does. On and on and on and on. Because you want to put her down. Because you want to be better. Jealousy is one of the reasons we backbite. What do I need to do? I need to remove. There's two things I need to do to stop sinning. Number one is hold to Allah. As we said, you ask him, you beg him. Ya Allah, I'm invited. I'm going to this house. I'm going to see people. I know I'm going to get weak. I'm going to do this. What do you need to do? If you're strong enough, don't go. If you know you're going to disobey Allah, don't go. Well, that's not easy in the beginning. But I'm going to go. So what I'm going to do? I'm not going to sit next to her. Because if I sit next to her, I know I'm going to say it. You see the point? Help yourself to obey Allah. I always say this to all my friends. Don't help me to disobey Allah. I have enough forces helping me already. Me works. Shaitan works. I don't need people. I need people to tell me 
you know what? Let's stop doing this. So number two is you have to really stop doing it and help yourself. And number three, which I loved it actually, it's called al-i'tidhar. You ask forgiveness from Allah. You know, when, when I hurt you, and I know I did, or someone come to me and says, why did you say it this way? It really hurted her. I said, really? Yeah, look at her. So I come to you and I said, I really didn't mean it. Please forgive me. How do you feel? That's when you ask Allah for forgiveness. And don't say, don't put excuses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what you have to go and say? One word. It's sorry, absolutely, but why did you do it? He will ask me. He's not going to ask me, but I feel it. I'm weak, Ya Allah. I'm weak. I love it. Don't, don't, don't deny it. Because when I say, Ya Allah, I love it, and I know I should not love it, what is he going to do to me? He's going to make me hated. Wallah, Allahu. And if you start having this relationship with Allah, when you start talking and says, Ya Allah, I love this thing, but I know you don't like it. Take it out of my heart. Make me hate it, because when you hate something, it's very easy not to do. Is when you love something, is the hardest one. So feel, and this, this is, and I'm going to share this with you, it's amazing. I mean, this man, how he writes, he says, when you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say the following. This is not a dua. He's, 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 he's talking to Allah and he says, Ya Allah, and I'm just translating here. He said, I have no excuse for this sin. So I don't know how I'm going to ask for forgiveness. I don't have anyone to help me. I don't have power. And no one is going to come and help me. But I am a sinner asking for forgiveness. I love this when you are so... You are who you are in front of Allah. You know when people forgive you? When they know you are truthful. When they see it in your eyes that you really didn't mean it. Very rarely they will not. But when they see that you are faking it. Mm. So you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what, Ya Rabbi, I have no excuse. I am just a sinner asking for forgiveness. Allahumma la udhra li. Ya Allah, I don't have any excuse. And it is absolutely your right this is very important in the relationship with Allah. It's absolutely your right if you want to punish me. That you, can, you say to somebody, you know, if you're not going to forgive me, it's your right. But you are generous. You are the merciful. You, you use all the names, the beauty names of Allah. فَإِنْ أَفَوْتْ فَالْحَقُّ لَكَ Look at this word. And if you forgive me, you have all the right also. What a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality of Tawbah, and this will be the last thing. The more you look at your sins as sins, the more genuine your Tawbah will be. When you look at what did I do, not what did I do, your repentance will be more powerful. They call it Ta'zimul Jinaya. For example, you think now and you say, I missed my Dhuhr. There's two ways of looking at this. I'm going to say, you know what? I was tired. I was busy at work. You know, I didn't have time. And I just didn't pray the whole. You didn't look at it as a major sin. Versus you say, Subhanak, you fed me. You gave me breakfast. You gave me the job. You gave me the car. You educated me. And you only wanted from me five minutes. And I couldn't give you the five minutes. Now look at the difference. Look at the difference. It's the same sin. Ta'zimul jinaya. You really have to look and say, Ya Allah. And they say this is very beautiful, is we need to be jealous. But for Allah. They call it al lillah. Whether I disobey Allah or you disobey Allah, and I come and I get upset, not because you are doing it, but because who you are disobeying. And Allah loves that person. You know when you love someone and somebody else is talking negative about them and you defend them? How happy you will be if this is you. That's how Allah. He loves when he is being disobeyed. Someone stand up and says, this is not right. In the right way, in the nice way, 
But in general, one of our problems these days, you know what? It's adi, as we say in the Arabic. It's fine. What is the big deal? All, half of people don't pray. That doesn't make it right. Half of the people do this. It doesn't make it right. He said, don't do it. <clears throat> There's a dua, which I, this is what I'm going to end up with. It's, he wrote it here, and he actually brought it from more than one hadith. And he says, when you really feel you want Allah to forgive you, and I'm, this is from me, and I say, take a place where you're alone in the house. Move your phone and move everything else. Make to make perform wudu and face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think about what you did. And then you can say the following. Allahumma as'aluka bi'izzika wa dhulli. I ask you by your might and my humiliation. اللهم أسألك بعزي وذلي إلا رحمتني by your might and my humiliation but you will forgive me أسألك بقوتك وضعفي I ask you by your might and your strength and my weakness وبغناك عني I love this one I ask by the fact you don't need me Allah doesn't need us. Ya ayuhah nas, antum al-fuqara ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghani al-hamid. People, Allah doesn't need you. Do you think Allah needs your salah? Do you think Allah needs your hijab? Do you think Allah needs your istighfar? Doesn't need a thing. Sa'as'aluka bi ghinaka wa faqri. By the fact you don't need me, and I need you. Hadihi nasiyatu al-khati'ati al-kadiba. This is my forehead. That will witness of all what I have done. And the lying one. You have so many other servants who will obey you and love you way more than I am. True or false? But I have no master but you. You have so many other options, alternatives, but I have no Allah. If you watched again the video yesterday, the only word you hear is what? Allah, Allah, Allahu Akbar. We have no one else. You have so many other servants, but I have only you. There is no refuge and no running away. This is the beautiful relationship we have with Allah. No refuge and no running away from you, but to you. They say the relationship we have with Allah is like a baby who loves his mother. And the mother got upset with him. And he starts crying. And she's really upset. What does he do? He goes to her and hangs to her. And he's crying. That's us with Allah. That's us with Allah. As'aluka. This is actually a dua of Rasul. This part is a dua of Rasul. As'aluka mas'alatul miskeen. I ask you the way a poor and helpless person ask. And I implore to you the way someone who is humiliated and abased asking. Look at this one. Feel it and see how your dua will change. I ask you like I am a blind person and I'm so scared. You know, one of the things I was thinking yesterday, when these people woke up with this shaking, what did they say? Where is my phone? Where is my friend? What did they say? Ya Allah. Ya Allah, rahmatak. I was literally start, start trying to think if this was me. Ya Allah, rahmatak. Ya Allah, save me. La ilaha illallah. Ya Allah, forgive me. That's what he's saying. Say, ask Allah with this feeling when you're scared, alone, blind, in the middle of the night, how you will ask him? The way a person who is their neck is under your control. And the nose is it's a form of speech where you, no one else will humiliate you but him. And the eyes is shedding tears. And the heart 
is accumulated to you, this will not come unless you love him. That's why I started with love. The relationship with Allah needs to change from I want or I need, we are Rabbi, to I love you and I'm not doing enough for you. I want to serve you, not because of Jannah and Nar. Alhamdulillah, there is Jannah and Nar, because you deserve it. You gave me all this. If we think this way, the relationship is completely different. So what you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you stand up. Now you understand why Rasul he used to stand up till his feet bleeds. Because we always think, how does that can happen? Because you love someone. When you love someone, how long do you talk with them on the phone? Hours. Are you tired? No. How come? Two hours or three hours. Because you love them. You have this attachment, your feelings. That's where we need to start. Know him. Remind yourself day and night of what he gave you and what he bestowed on you and how he can take it in a second. In a minute, it's all gone. And then change it. I ask you as a beggar, as a one who loves you. I always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love me. I was like, Ya Rabbi, I didn't do much. I don't deserve your love, but I want you to love me. I ask you by your name. Ya Allah, you will love me. Maybe he will hear me. Not maybe. For sure he hears me. But inshallah, he will respond. Ask Allah this way. That you change the relationship with Allah from hate to love. And the last thing I am going to say is, you do not love someone. And you do not really care about someone unless you always remember them. I was, subhanAllah, also reading recently about the signs of love in general, not love of Allah, love in general. And you know what they say? When you always think of them. You know you love someone when you always think of them. How often we think of Allah. And ask him. That's why the dua of Rasul والسلام, when he looked at Sayyidina Mu'ad, he said, I love you. I love you, Ya Mu'ad. Ya Allah, I wish it was you and me. And he said, make sure. After every salah, what do you say? Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Ya Allah, help me. I can't do it. Help me to remember you. And to be grateful. And husni ibadatik. Not only worship you, whatever, two minutes salah. Proper worship. I need to remember him. I need to ask him. I need to beg him. Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us young and old. The people who were in their buildings, they were not 50 years old and above. I told you some of you came late. It was a video, it was online. Subhanallah, this was a mother. She's probably not older than 30. And she was out. And the children is under the rubbles. Ah, it's a killer. So when death comes in, doesn't know the age. And doesn't know you, you're, still, you're still young and you still have to graduate and you still have to do this. It comes. Let's work. Let's act from today. Maybe your istighfar and my istighfar and your dua and our dua will save the people. They, they pulled out children. I'm sure you've seen it. They, they pulled out a baby yesterday. Baby, baby, this big. It's actually in northern Syria. So your dua, your istighfar, your tawbah, your going back to Allah. Maybe us in this group will save people there. But don't go like nothing happened. And don't keep doing the way you are doing. Hasn't time yet arrived for people's heart, believers' heart, to submit to Allah and to what Allah sent from truth? The Sahaba, when they read, this was sent to the Sahaba, said, yes, Ya Allah, time has come. And I will say this to everybody, myself, number one, for sure time has come. And we are actually behind. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who he is pleased with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift all the hardship on all the Muslims, especially those in Turkey and in Syria. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always people who remind others, 
each one remind the others, and most importantly, of the people who, when they are reminded, they listen and they follow the best of it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi taslima kathira.